Welcome to the next video in our EC Engineer tutorial video series. In this video, we will demonstrate some of the diagnostic capabilities that are available with EC Engineer when connected to a live running EtherCAT network. This video will focus on the diagnostic possibilities available in the object dictionary as well as with the process data. The setup for this video is the same as in our previous video showing how to create a remote configuration via the remote access server. So if you need a refresher, be sure to check that video out first. So we already have a running EtherCAT network with the main controller running Linux on an ARM processor connected to a variety of analog and digital input and output slices. The controller also has a second ethernet port available so that we can connect via TCP IP using the Acontis remote access server. To get started, open EC Engineer and select the Remote Diagnosis option from the Start page. Enter the IP address of the Ethernet port on the controller so that we can connect remotely via TCP IP. In the Project Explorer area, you can see all the slave devices that were discovered on the network and note that they are already in the operational state. The performance tab of the master shows the current network cycle time of one millisecond, as well as the amount of data transferred between the master and the slaves. For this small network, the average load is just a few percent of the total capacity. Now let's dive into some of the possibilities with the object dictionary for the master and slaves. Selecting the COE Object Dictionary tab will load the object dictionary of the master. Here you can see various information about the master like the name and the version, but the master object dictionary mostly contains objects with diagnostic and statistic data based on the ETG specification 5001.3 for the MDP field bus gateway profile. Object 2002 is the bus diagnosis object with many useful entries about the current bus statistics. You can read all of the objects and those that are read-writable, you can write to. For example, we can clear the frame and datagram counter entries in subindex 10 and 11 by writing a one to the counter clear entry in subindex 14. Most slave devices have implemented the ability to load the object dictionary via SDOs. So clicking on a slave device in the Project Explorer will bring up the slave's object dictionary. In addition to the required objects all EtherCAT devices must implement, a slave device may also implement manufacturer-specific objects like this entry 8020 here. Coming back to the master device, the history tab contains a history of all the messages from the master like information messages, warnings, and errors. In EC Engineer, up to 250 messages will be stored here. If we unplug the cable coming into slave 1011, we will see the resulting error messages are logged in this history object. Now we will plug the cable back in to fix the problem, and we can clear all the messages from the drop down menu and clicking Execute. Some slave devices have also implemented this history object as well. Due to the cable disconnection, we can see that the last slave, slave 1012, still has a problem. The device dropped down to safe op when no data was received as expected, so we need to set it back to operational. We can see the slave error state is now cleared. Now we will transition to some of the diagnostic features that are possible with the process data variables. On the variables tab for a slave, you can see the process data and the symbolic variable names. EC Engineer will graph the selected variable over time and also shows a convenient way to monitor and force the input and output data. Since there may be a number of slaves in the network, each with numerous variables, you can focus on a select few with the watch list feature. Here we will add the channel one and channel two input values to the watch list. Let's also add some variables from slave 1002 and 1004 to the watch list as well.
The watch list is on the master node, so click on the master in the project explorer and then the watch list tab. Here are the specific variables we chose to monitor on the watch list. You can even save the watch list as a CSV file or load a previously saved watch list. The watch list provides a way to monitor a subset of process data to observe the input values from the slave devices and the output values created by the master application. For example, we will push the button on slave 1004, which captures the digital input and see the changes in EC Engineer. We can also force both input and output variables to a certain value. Here we force slave 1002's channel 1 output value. So despite the master telling this variable to be false, we are overruling this with EC Engineer and setting it to true. Please note this can lead to a dangerous behavior in a real application, so should only be used in a debug or maintenance mode. Here we force the input of slave 1008's channel 1 value to 20. This means that the master will receive this forced value of 20 despite the real physical value the slave is communicating on the network. We can release individual variables or release all at once. Now the real physical values are being received by the master and slave devices again. Note that if EC Engineer is ever disconnected, the forced variables are also stopped immediately. So that covers some of the highlights of the diagnostic possibilities available with EC Engineer. We only briefly touched upon the object dictionary and process data features, but we will cover more diagnostic capabilities like accessing ESC registers, slave error counters, file over ethercat, and even distributed clocks in subsequent videos. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to our channel as we will be bringing you many more videos about ethercat. Please leave a comment below if you found the video helpful, or if you have a question, you can also get in touch with us on our website.